In spring, Devon's countryside is at its most glorious. Bluebells, primroses in the hedgerows, giving way to cow parsley and red campion. Lambs frolicking in the fields, swallows swooping overhead. In northwest Devon, there's a gentle rhythm to life in and around the small parishes of Pikeworthy, Bridge Rule and Pancras Week, where farms and small holdings dot the landscape. Being close to the North Atlantic coast, the land here is wet and boggy. The rare, calm grasslands rich in biodiversity. Far from the madding crowd. This really is a very special corner of England. It's close to the Cornish border, lovely county where I grew up. And it was for this reason we moved down here, oh, a decade ago now. A quiet life surrounded by beautiful, unspoilt countryside. This area around Holsworthy is an agricultural community. It's been like this for hundreds of years. But now this beautiful landscape is being threatened by a different type of farming, if such it can be called. A planning application for a vast solar farm at Daryl Water has been submitted to Torridge District Council by Renewable Energy Systems Limited. It's by no means the only solar farm in this neck of the woods. In recent years, Pieworthy has borne its fair share of solar installations, but this latest one, covering 164 acres of green fields, would be the largest yet, not just in this area, but in the whole of Devon. Local residents feel enough is enough. We bought this farm. It was surrounded by countryside, animals grazing, and it was really idyllic. And in the time we've lived here, which is nearly 20 years, we've seen it change bit by bit to become an industrialised area of glass and metal, really. Over the last few years, developers from outside the area have offered landowners substantial sums to lease their land. What were once traditional farms are now euphemistically called solar farms. In reality, they're commercial installations surrounded by miles of high security fencing and CCTV cameras. There are already six within a few square miles of Pieworthy, including the largest operational one in Devon to date. Pitworthy covers 109 acres of what used to be productive farmland. Christopher and Heather Darwin can see it clearly from their property and from land where Heather rears livestock organically. They're opposed to yet another, even larger, installation bordering land at Heather Farms. I find it just hugely upsetting to see the land destroyed, the biodiversity destroyed, for an inefficient, ineffective means of producing electricity. And there will be CCTV cameras all along the border of my land. And I don't think that's acceptable. How would you feel if CCTV cameras were pointing in your garden? We are indeed eco-conscious and we have our own domestic solar panels, which makes a bit of electricity, which goes into the grid and supplies us with a little bit some of the time. But in this climate in Devon, you cannot rely on solar power on a large scale when you have clouds and rain. 10 inches of rain in Pieworthy in December? No, they should be further south on the large scale that is proposed. Independent energy experts support this view. A growing number say solar farms have no place in our countryside and are of no value in the large scale production of electricity for consumers. You've got a scarce resource like land, why would you want to take land which produces energy for human beings? It's a solar collector already, after all. It's collecting energy from the sun, turning it into humanly comestible energy, food, very valuable to us indeed. Why would you take that resource and then generate third-rate electricity, which is very expensive? It just doesn't make economic sense. I must confess I have a special interest in having the Daryl Water solar farm proposal stopped. It'll come right up very near to the border of my little farm. And there it'll be unsightly, unwelcome and unwanted neighbour. So naturally I want permission refused. And then so do most people in this little village. 
The residents of Pyworthy believe they are under siege and that their voices are being drowned out by those of the big developers. So we're a really small community here, but that doesn't mean that our opinions should be bulldozed over. Um, we've got five smaller solar installations around the village. We've got one bigger one in the next door village. We haven't complained enormously about those because we totally understand that we have to do our piece. We're not NIMBYs. But this installation is huge. It's over good farmland and there are really good policies around the fact that it shouldn't be covering farmland. It should be on brownfield sites, it should be on factory roofs and Torridge Council have plenty of those that they could be using. Pyworthy isn't alone in trying to face down these planning applications. Over 4,000 acres of Devon farmland have been sacrificed for solar farms. Another six current schemes will ruin over 1,000 acres of Devon pasture. So where does it end? Well, there are no fields left for wildlife or livestock. And tourism, what about tourism? Very important the Devon economy. But do visitors, do they honestly come to see industrial landscapes or to see the glorious Devon countryside? The organisation we've turned to to help us, the only one in the county fighting to protect Devon's countryside from inappropriate development, is the Devon branch of the countryside charity CPRE. The amount of material that's involved in manufacturing them, mostly in China, it is enormous and a lot of energy is used in the mining, refining, manufacturing process, the transport, the maintenance and the decommissioning. So they are definitely not low carbon facilities. Certainly the, uh, the solar panels contain toxic materials and there is no way at the moment that they can be recycled so they probably go to landfill. But if the panels are damaged while they're in operation, then there is a danger that the land underneath can be polluted. So the idea that the soil after 40 years will be in good condition is nonsense. The soil would be severely degraded at the end of the life of the solar farm. As a result of the pandemic, people have really learned to appreciate the countryside and to value it, to value nature and the natural balance, and we destroy it at our peril. These solar farms are a threat to destroying it. They're too big, they are industrialised, uh, commercial applications. We really have got to look after Devon's countryside, our wildlife, our nature, and we're so grateful that we have such a household name spearheading our campaign, and we really hope the planners will sit up and listen to what we've got to say. If you care about Devon's countryside, then please help us oppose this Daryl Waters solar farm proposal. We don't need it, we don't want it.